Hello, everybody, and welcome to APAX ELT Convention 2022, Teaching Matters. I'm Angel Zuliva, president of APAC, and this is Uso Asol, my co-president. Hi there. Um, well, as everybody knows, education is essential for society. Well, at least the, the right people know that it's essential. And that's why um, this year's convention is entitled Teaching Matters, because well, teaching really matters. And so that's why we're here today with all of you. This is a, a summary of what we're going to be discussing today with you. And just to keep you up to date with what's been going on in the association and to let you know how we're doing. So we'll start off with a recap of 2021. Okay, we'll see membership numbers and uh, we're also going to see all the training sessions we, we've organized with attendance, the main topics, speakers and such. Uh, we're going to be talking about how we have engaged with you through the social networks, the ELT journal and also an, over, an overview of the web page. We will then tell you about the winners for each category of the John McDowell Awards and some upcoming projects that we have lined up for you, okay? namely the Opus Training Courses and the Spring Workshops. And finally, we will end with the APAC ELT Convention giveaway, which we hope uh, some of you will win and we hope it keeps you engaged as well. So here's for the recap of 2021. Um, right now we have 540 members. It's a tiny bit smaller than uh, the number we had last year. We have a lot of people retiring. So <laughs> that's, uh, and even though there's a lot of new members, we, we, we're, losing, we're losing a little bit. Okay, we hope that after the, uh, no, finally, when one day, one day it has to finish, when the pandemic is finished and we can get back to hybrid or at least to have some face-to-face -face session, this will, this will change for the best. So what happens when you become an APAC member? We have a very, 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 <laughs> very, very economic price. Okay, it's just 42 euros a year. And it's been like that for the past, I would say, about 10 years. And these 42 euros give you a very, very juicy discount for lots of training sessions. Okay, if you remember, we do uh, the ELT convention, but we also do the spring sessions, we do summer courses, we do autumn workshops, and this year we're also doing this Opus training course. We, you, we also send you lots of teaching tips and tools via our social networks. We share with you the ELT journal before we share it with everybody else. And in general, you're just contributing to you know, a very positive association that tries to train and, and provide a platform for English teachers all over Catalonia. So let's look at the have a look at the attendance at the first at the at all the training events during 2021. OK, as you can see, the top line is the the overall rate. So the total attendance adding up all the events. OK, and if you look at the, the first years, you will see that there is a there is a line that goes on. No, there is only this pink line in the beginning. And then there's all the other lines that emerge in 2017. This is because before 2017, our only event in the year was the ELT convention. OK, and that so that overlaps with the green line. OK, the ELT convention is the green line. So after after 2017, the the numbers of attendance have more or less kept the same. OK, it's taken a hit with the pandemic, as you can see, especially the ELT convention, because I think a lot of us enjoyed it as a as a social event as well. No, it was the time of the year where you saw everybody, you saw colleagues, you saw people you had been to university with, maybe. OK, and because we don't have that social element now, no, the attendance numbers for the convention have taken a bit of a hit. OK, um, we have other training sessions as well. OK, so we have um, the yellow one is the autumn workshops. OK, this year, because the uh, because of some changes in the regulations, we haven't been able to take as many participants as in previous editions, but it's still uh, it's still been very successful. OK. You can see in blue the spring workshops, which we didn't manage to do in 2020, 
but we we successfully did in 2021 okay we'll tell you a bit more about that uh, later on and we see the red line which is the summer courses which is the first year that we do 2021 maybe in hindsight it wasn't the most <laughs> adequate timing but well we we gave it a try and we did our best and we'll also tell you a bit more about it uh, in the future okay so just a few in a few slides all right, so moving on to the annual ELT convention, which is basically our star event. We're all looking forward to going to the convention, or in this case, attending the convention without moving from home uh, every year. Uh, last year's event had the motto, um, birds of a feather teach together. Hopefully you'll get the pun. And it was held online due to the pandemic again at the end of um, January. It was a big success. Again, despite all the circumstances, we definitely did our best to keep it going in spite of everything that we're going through. And so, next slide, please. And so we have a total of 297 participants, which we were delighted with, um, and quite a few partners like National Geographic Learning or Trinity College London. The British Council was, was also there um, as well as a partner. And uh, we also had MM Publications and Sam Talk who took part. Um, the plenary speakers were David Bueno, who did the opening session on neurobiology and neuroscience, which was really, really interesting, and um, bird watching as well. Um, you'll know what I'm talking about if you actually watch the session. Um, and then we had two guest speakers by national, sponsored by National Geographic, which were Alex Warren and Dr. John Kangxing. Um, actually, very interesting, insightful sessions on how to um, manage online learning and how to involve learners. Um, and then we also had Chris Rowland. I think Chris um, doesn't need any further introduction. He was sponsored by Trinity College London, and he was well, hilarious on the Thursday evening. And then we also had Ron Russell Stannard um, talking about how to integrate technology in uh, the classroom, especially in online learning contexts, and also Kieran Donahue on the fifth skill of viewing. That was also very interesting. Lots of familiar faces. It's a shame that we couldn't get together physically, to mingle and socialize, that, that's something we, we missed. Um, but hopefully we can do that sometime soon or soon-ish, we hope. All right, so moving on to our next event, as Angels pointed out, um, not only do we hold an annual ELT convention, but we also hold two more training events during the year, one in the spring and one in autumn. Um, and the spring workshops this year, 2022, could um, thank or think whoever um, could be held. And um, the motto for this year, or the title, the topic was teaching outside the box. So we had a lot of sessions on creativity, on how to innovate, on how to um, connect with the learners and how to bring science into the classroom. So for example, uh, we had Marta Portero for the two plenary sessions and um, she gave two very interesting sessions on how to uh, bring neuroscience um, and use it to our advantage as teachers. We also had workshops by Ana Cañete, um, Suzanne Davis, Elena Vercher, and then finally Katie Wright and Tim Ward, two teas in a pot. Um, and they gave us very different perspectives on what they do in the classroom, always with a very practical sort of approach with activities and ideas that you can bring straight to your classroom, which is something we try to uh, always emphasize. Um, and this was held on two days, April 10th and April 17th. It was five um, hours each, but in total it was 10 hours of certified training by the Departamento de Educación, so that makes it even more as well. Um, this was also done live on Zoom, but one of the most interesting um, changes that we've made is that the sessions were recorded, so you still had one more week to watch them later. Um, and this gave a lot of people the opportunity of taking part, even if they couldn't attend the sessions live, which is obviously always the best option. But if you, for logistic reasons, for personal reasons, you cannot attend, you still get a chance to take part in the workshops. Um, this is the second edition of the workshops, and we'll be holding the third edition in spring 2022. So we're really looking forward to that. We had 70 participants in 2021, and we hope to, you know, increase that uh, participation in 2022. So, stay tuned for more news. 
Um, okay, thank you for that, Osoa. Now let's move on to the summer courses, which, as I mentioned before, uh, we didn't have a lot of attendance, but we had a great lineup, actually. So we had, we offered four summer courses. Um, and as you know, the regulations have changed very much. So we, we had some problems with the, how the, distributing the hours and the amount of hours that you could do per week, because it was an online format, which was something new for us. As you know, we used to organize uh, summer courses with the Departamento de Educación. Uh, but this year we decided to, to go solo and try that on our own. And well, it's, it, it was, we had a great team to start with, but the, the, I think the timing was, was a bit off. Okay, so we had Colin Young offering tackling troubles in the ELT classroom. Team Worry exploring methodologies and lesson frame, frameworks. Uh, we had um, uh, Emma Reynolds offering emotional intelligence, mindfulness for teachers and students. And Celia Esquerra, who was a new trainer for us, who was offering a hands-on approach to project-based learning. In the end, uh, what happened is that this... Um, uh, we didn't get a lot of participants. As you can see, we only had 11 participants. So we decided to open only two of the courses. Okay. Because the, I mean, we, we were still running them at a loss, but we thought that it was worth, worth a try. And the, the courses were very good quality. So the participants were happy about the, the quality. And it also, no, it offered a very good opportunity to have a really hands-on, <laughs> hands-on training with the, with both trainers. So the, they took place during the first two weeks of July and the course, the, the work distribution was about 15 hours a week and they combined live sessions in the morning with some autonomous work and feedback in the afternoons on the part of the trainers. So hopefully more people will turn up for them. Yes, please. <laughs> Uh, we're considering offering the same ones again because actually the, it wasn't a problem with the quality of the courses, but we will see. Uh, and finally, the last event of the year we organized was the autumn workshops, uh, which uh, we had three trainers for. One of them might be familiar to you. So we had Monsi Irun, who was giving the plenary talks, and Chaviurtina and Usoa Sol, who were doing the, the workshops. Okay, this was our fourth edition. It's the second time we do them online and it went actually very well, <laughs> surprisingly well. And we've been very lucky with the autumn workshops because I think everybody has a lot of energy at the start of the year and we have very active participants. So that's great. Let's hope we can, we can do that again. Um, as with the spring workshops, as also I mentioned in the spring workshops, all the sessions are recorded and they're available for replay. As you may know, we publish the, the plenary talks. We, we make them public because after all, we are a non-profit association and we want as many teachers to benefit from these sessions as possible. Okay, so the workshops will remain only available for the participants, but if you are an APAC member, you will receive a link to the public, uh, to the plenary sessions at some point in the year. Uh, we we did this. We use the same formula we've been using for all the online uh, online sessions. Okay, so we have uh, five hours per day, separate into two two different Saturdays. This was also certified by Departamento de Educación, uh, which is the reason why we had to limit the numbers that we had. Okay, because there's a limit between the trainers and the number of of uh, attendees we can have for each trainer. Again, the levels of satisfaction were through the roof, as in previous editions, and people enjoyed you know, getting to, to apply project-based learning in different degrees, okay? So some people have it easier, have more open schools, but some people have to do, have to do like little pills here and there, okay? So these, these sessions catered for all these needs. Yeah, the sessions, again, were very practical and very adaptable, so everyone could find something that they could take to their own teaching situation. Perfect. And now so we'll take over again and tell you about the social networks. All right, so as you know, we have a really powerful social network media managing team, um, which is basically us again. <laughs> and uh, um, we're present in three social networks. The first one is Facebook, which we actually keep, although 
um, a lot of people don't use anymore. We've grown slightly from 1,316 followers to 1,346 followers. So if you're interested in Facebook, join us. Um, our uh, account is APAC ELT, as usual, all lowercase. And the next social network we're on, and this is a bit more, I'd say, active or more present, uh, is Twitter. And we've grown quite a lot, a lot more, actually, on Twitter. Uh, we've gone from 1,280 followers to 1,393 followers. So thanks a lot for following us. Um, there's a lot of updates on Twitter. We're actually quite active. Um, and if you look at our post, you'll see all the memes from all the training sessions. So we have quite a lot of fun. Apart from informing you, we try to actually enjoy the process. Um, feel free to um, tweet or retweet or repost um, everything we do as we try to get in touch and engage with our audience. Um, and so we find Twitter is actually a very useful platform to, to do that. So, so hope to see you on Twitter sometime. Cool. And then finally, last but not least, we also have um, Instagram that has also uh, risen quite a lot, actually. Uh, we've gone from 1,360 followers to 1,778 followers. So, wow, we're actually quite impressed. Even if um, both Angels and I and Raquel, who's actually in the social media team as well, are boomers, um, we're really impressed with the... Uh, in, not really uh, boomers. <laughs> Oh, we're not even boomers, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> so that, that's what matters. Teaching matters and trying to keep up also matters. So it's both things. So in any case, do follow us on Twitter or on Instagram or on Facebook, if you're on it as well. And um, we also have a YouTube channel, which um, we hope you subscribe to if you haven't yet. Um, we now have more than 100 followers and we post videos periodically. So check out the updates because um, like Angel said, the plenary sessions are posted after a certain time, um, but you can watch them again online at your own pace and um, you can enjoy the sessions even if you miss them. And so the most popular videos were actually uh, Hugh Deller's session on the APAC Autumns. So last year's, actually two years ago session that was Hugh Deller, and we'll hopefully have Hugh Deller really soon coming back. We had a lot of fun with you. Um, and also, last year's opening session is one of the videos with the most views. So that means you're actually watching us. So in any case, thanks for watching. Um, I, I feel a bit weird saying thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, but <laughs> well, please do. Uh, and so Russell Center video was also very popular. So in any case, go check out our um, YouTube channel, and you'll see everything that is posted. There's actually quite a lot of stuff. Uh, which, you know, you might find interesting if you have um, not much to do, which teaches <laughs> you a free time and very long holidays. So, you know, so yeah, go and check that's, that's exactly, <laughs> that's exactly how it works. <laughs> um, okay, now back to a more traditional kind of format. Uh, a back sealed journal is still very active. We have tidied up the how we present the journal in the web page so it's a bit easier to use. So if you go to Apaxi, uh, to our web page and the ELT journal section, which is under resources, you will find all the images of the covers and you will also find something very handy, which is a paper finder, which finally <laughs> we got through. Uh, all the articles are listed individually in APA format to make your life a bit easier. So if you ever, if you're writing a paper, or if you're writing something and you need to quote some papers, uh, some, some of the articles, you can find them here. If you are preparing for oppositions or concurso translats or something and you need points, you can also find, if you have published things with our journal, you can find it here. Okay, so that will also be a bit easier and it will save you a few email messages back and forth. Okay, uh, as we say, uh, as you can see in the web page, this section is in progress. Okay, we are uh, we are working through some of the paper only <laughs> journals that we still have. Okay, but hopefully it's going to be, most of the things are there already. There's just a few issues missing. Okay. Um, now, uh, if you want to publish, as we said, that be because it gives you some points or because you have something you really, really want to share, and that's fantastic, 
uh, you can find instructions to publish online on our webpage. Okay. The journal is open to everybody. You don't even have to be an English teacher to do that. You can be anything else you want. And we have a variety of formats. Okay. You'll see we have infographics, we have toolkits, we have interviews, we have more traditional research papers, we have materials development. You, if you want to send us a review of a book or something, some kind of material that you have enjoyed, you can also do that. We'll be very, very happy to publish. Okay. But also activities that you've done in class. It can be also, I mean, very practical because I think a lot of people get put off just by the title ELT journal. It might be a bit threatening, but this is basically by teachers for teachers. So we'd exactly. love to hear from you. Exactly. Okay. So if it's short, it doesn't matter. If it's long, we'll help you maybe trim it back a bit. Okay. But we are, our editing team are very, very hands-on and we try and help and make the best of what you have. Okay. Um, now let's move on to APAC's webpage since we've been mentioning that. Uh, we still growing in visits, which is great. And no, quite, it was quite easy to predict that with the, with the pandemic and lockdown, people would be more online and that has materialized. Now we have 46% more visits in 2021 than in the previous year. Okay, so as usual, uh, the visits peak around training events. So you can see January, you know, the mark with the circle, April and November. You know, so whenever we have the training sessions, we see a small peak in June as well. <laughs> but it is actually quite a lot more than the people who register for the summer courses. <laughs> but um, okay, so we, we do have a lot of visits and that's great. We've been tidying up the page. So hopefully uh, that's going to show as well. So interestingly, this has changed very much. So we now have most access is through direct. So it's people either typing in the address bar or coming from a link. So probably from the e-news or from somewhere else, wherever that is published. Okay. So that's about 10,000, which is not bad at all. Uh, are people searching as in Google? Uh, that's also a big, big source of, uh, of visits. And as you may have found out the painful way, there's lots of APAC <laughs> throughout the world. Okay. So I'm quite happy we, we you managed to find us uh, nonetheless. Okay. Yes, so the Asian Pacific Association of Cater. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. That's so mean of them. So rude. Um, well, anyway, uh, other sources of visits are Instagram and Twitter. So, okay, the social networks are doing their bit. And there's some mysterious uh, sources, which we have no idea about. <laughs> but there you are, others. So I'm assuming it's uh, a mix of other social networks, maybe from, you know, that, that are specific to some countries or other random web pages. Okay, as you can see from the from the graph, the focus of visits in 2021 is back to the training events. Last year, it was more, you could see that people were spending more time online and they were looking at resources and the toolkits and the journal and what have you. And this year, I think because we're all a bit, a bit stressed, so we're just going straight to what we need, which is not the access to the sessions. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the landing page, of course, that's the the most uh, the one with the most visits. But then we have you no know, the annual convention, then the convention web page, okay, the recorded sessions, spring workshops, autumn workshops, uh, the registration pages, and a back ELT Thursday. Interestingly, <laughs> no, the sessions for one specific day, which were also very popular. And now it's your turn, Ursula. Yeah, um, like we said, if we have some spare time, we're trying to tidy up the website. And in the resources section, you'll find our toolkits, APAC toolkits, which are basically a collection of resources from all of the training sessions that we do. We try to put together all the ideas and all the websites and all the resources in general that our speakers are mentioned during the session, just to make it easier for you to have everything centralized in one place. So do check it out. We have seven um, toolkits so far, but we're obviously planning on um, publishing more. So yes, stay tuned for more resources and more info. I think this is actually quite practical and quite useful just to have a summary of everything. If you haven't taken notes during the session or if you missed something, maybe 
um, and you would like more information on that, our team of curators takes care of this. And then also one of the stars on our webpage is the members area, which is on the landing page. As you can see here, it says what one of the tabs says join APAC and the right tab says APAC's members area. Um, we're still working on it. So maybe um, if you haven't received an invitation to join, please drop us a line. But if you have and you have checked it out, like a lot of people have, you'll see that the members area includes a lot of useful stuff like the e-news, for example, or like the ELT journal before it's actually sent out to everyone else, or the e-toolkits and the capsules as well. They're actually published here for you to watch at your own pace, again, as many times as you like. So a very interesting resource um, for you to take a look at. Members area, if you haven't joined yet, do drop us a line if you haven't got the info, and um, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Exactly. Just to let you know that uh, the reason why uh, it, it is a bit slow, it's because of the data protection. So we cannot uh, invite you without your consent. OK, so it has to be done manually, which is a bit a bit of a pain, really. Yeah, that makes um, it a bit more tricky. But... Yes. <laughs> uh, OK, so now moving on to the John McDowell Awards. Uh, as you know, we've had to change a little bit. We don't have uh, the three categories we used to have. We only have two categories for now. And we are working on uh, transforming the awards. OK, so keep your your eyes peeled because there will be more news about this. And we'll try and find ways to make the no, the, the prices and the categories themselves as as um, as relevant to you as possible. So. The winners for the first category, the winner is, uh, okay, this is for research projects uh, carried out by individual teachers or student teachers, maybe from the master's or from a teaching degree. And the first prize winner gets a hundred, uh, 500, no, 100, a 500 euro coupon and a year of APAX training sessions, which is quite a good deal. So, and the winner this year is uh, Joan Chirivella, who's one of our favorite <laughs> training attendees because he's really active and committed and um, his research project is the need for focus on form in an English immersion context the case of writing for third graders okay Joan congratulations for this and we look forward to be seeing you to see you around in our training sessions the, for category B, which was for a school or class group and the teachers, okay, for a materials or project that they have been working on in their school, uh, the first prize winner gets 500 euro coupon to be spent on resources or materials for the school, which we hope they'll let us know <laughs> and tell us how they're getting on with that. And the, the project was how can we create the best team pack ever? which sounds like a great project, actually. And it was mm -hmm. carried out by Yvette Palau, Maria Gracia Tellez, and their fifth grade students from Sagrat Corta Raza. Okay, so congratulations on that project. We'll be presenting a bit more about it uh, later on in the year. Okay, as you know, as last year, there will be a video with the, with the winners telling us a little bit about their projects. And we will also be publishing some things in our journal. Okay, so just stay tuned for more news on that. The runner-up for category B gets a 250 euro coupon to be spent on resources or materials for the school. Again, which we hope you share with us and you let us know how uh, how they can help you make the better the days, no, your daily teaching a bit better. The name of the project was traveling the USA through TV series, which again sounds very interesting, very engaging for students. It was a project carried out by Lourdes Pujadas, who's also another, <laughs> another very motivated teacher whom we see a lot uh, in the social networks, and we also see her in some training sessions. So it's great. No, we are, we are a great and very active community. Uh, she carried out the project with her fourth ESO students from Colegio Jesus Maria Josep and Mañaneta, no, Sant Andreu. And if you would like to be next year's winner, uh, please go onto our webpage, uh, check the conditions there, check the information that you have to submit, and you can submit your project online. Okay, so, uh, and that's it. Okay, and we'll know, we'll know next year. Okay, so let us know. We're gonna keep initially these two categories, uh, 
but again, it depends on many things. So if you would like to have a say on where the prices go in the future, you can come to our uh, to our assembly, to our annual assembly in May, and just have your say about it. But in any case, just like the training session, the focus is on making the work that is being carried out visible. I mean, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to you know, submit your proposal. This We're emphasizing the work you do with your students on a day-to-day -day basis or the actual research you do to implement into your classroom. So please do take a look at the conditions because I think everyone could um, contribute in some way. All right, and I'm moving on to upcoming projects because this is a non-stop thing. Um, like, like I always joke about, uh, we don't have much of a social life. Um, so we keep on planning more stuff not to get bored. But in the, the, so the first project, upcoming project that we have is an OPOS training course. So next slide, please. Um, we've called this course ACE the OPOS, I think, um, this to give you motivation. Um, and this is a course uh, which will start on February 12th. And it'll be coordinated by Edward Lockhart, who you can see in the picture, a very experienced teacher and teacher trainer. Um, these, this is a course that um, will run for uh, three months, I think, February, March, April, May, four months, actually. I'm a, I'm a letter person. So if you show the next slide, please. Um, it will be coordinated by Edward Lockhart, like I said, but it also uh, has sessions by Raquel Joaquin and Ana Sian. Um, and for, so, so this is 52 hours of live online training. The sessions will be online, but um, they will be on Saturday from nine to one. And you will get all the materials sent to you once you sign up. Um, you can register from the APAC website in the training section. And um, if you have any questions or you want to find out more, um, you can come to the Q&A session, which will be on Friday, February 4th during the convention. And um, Edward, Raquel, and Anna will be there to answer any of the questions you may have. Um, we've been able to launch this course at a very competitive price. It's uh, 450 euros for APAC members. So I think it's worth taking a look at um, joining APAC, even if you do it just for this. And um, we believe it's a very solid course that um, Edward, uh, Raquel, and Anna have come up with. They're, the, the three of them are practicing teachers. They've passed their opus themselves. And so they have a lot of tips and tricks to share with you, which we definitely um, believe that they'll help you to ace the opus, which is our main goal. And then moving on to our second upcoming project, which is the next edition of the spring workshops. So next slide, please. Um, they will be taking part in April, but we still need to finalize the dates. And this will be the third edition of the workshops we do, the, the actual second online. Um, the, the, so this year's edition will be on CLIL and content-based instruction. We feel this is a very um, current issue that a lot of schools are sort of dealing with and teachers are dealing with. So uh, it will be basically run and coordinated by, um, by a team of teachers Leader by Alexandra Vraciu from Univers Universidad de Lleida. Um, and all the sessions will be online, but again, recorded for replay later. Um, like I said, with every training session that we do, we try to emphasize the practical aspect of teaching. So give you ideas, materials, and resources that you can implement straight away into your classroom right after the workshop. And um, again, this will take place on two different days, five, day five hours each day. Uh, to sum up the 10 hours of certified training by Departamento de Educación. So stay tuned for more news. We'll be giving you more information in, in a couple of weeks or a few weeks. Yeah, just one thing, uh, because of these uh, new regulations for the courses, we're going to have to limit the numbers of attendees, okay? So if you feel like this might be useful for you, you might want to <laughs> register ASAP. Um, okay, and... That's it, let's go to the interesting part, which is the one you all wanted to listen, which is the ELT convention giveaways. And uh, this year we're gonna have two giveaways. The first one is gonna be on Instagram and uh, the lucky winner is gonna get a book of your choice. You can choose anything that has been published by either uh, one of the convention presenters. There's quite a few speakers who have published things, so we've left it very open. No, last year we did only from the opening talk, but I think it's better to, to 
give you a bit more choice. OK, you can also have a look at our partners web pages and choose something from their web page if you prefer. OK, so that's another possibility. There's lots of different things. Um, and how can you participate? Well, if you're not following us on Instagram, please follow us on Instagram. And I'm assuming you're all doing that, but <laughs> just in case. And when the convention starts, okay, so from 24th January onwards, so today onwards, leave a comment saying which of the convention sessions you found the most useful and interesting and why. Okay, I mean, it's a have to be a thesis. But tell us a bit about it, because it's always good to have feedback. OK, if you have a meme or a funny thing, that's bonus points, because we're very tired and we don't sleep a lot. So <laughs> we appreciate a bit of silliness in our social networks. Uh, the deadline is the same as for registering all your all your attendance. OK, so it's February 13th at 23.59 minutes, 59 seconds. OK. <laughs> So that's a deadline. You can leave as many comments as you like. Again, bonus points for silliness. And the winner will be announced on APAC's social media, of course, because no, I will get in touch with you, don't worry. Um, OK, and Nusua, if you want to tell them uh, a little bit about the, the second one. OK, so the second giveaway is going to take place during the um, wrap-up session. So. Uh, you need to join us on the last day of the convention. And what you can win is not only a book of your choice, like in the last prize, but also one year of APAC membership. So we, we think it's quite a juicy prize um, just to motivate you to join us for the last part of the session, if you're not motivated enough, that is, because most people are already motivated without the actual hook of the um, giveaway. So if you show the next slide, please. These are the conditions to participate in the giveaway. Basically, you just need to be with us on Friday, um, 5th of February at 2 um, and take place in the Kahoot. We will organize with a lot of um, fun EFL-related questions. And um, the winner will get these um, two prizes. And basically, you just need to be faster and more accurate and smarter than everybody else and just have a lot of fun because that's what we do in the wrap-up sessions. So we, we look forward to seeing you there. And so what well, we've talked a lot about um, social media and in the world we live in, uh, it's essential to be present online. And that's why we wanted to ask you not only to come and join us, but to spread the word, spread the word, spread the love. But in our case, spread the word is better. Um, <laughs> it would be great if you could let people know about us either on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, or just, um, just talking to the people you know who are not and still part of this community. We're actually a, a very welcoming bunch. Um, we do have a lot of fun in the training session, so we don't only learn, but we also enjoy ourselves. And so, um, yeah, we look forward to having more people join our big sort of APAC family. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so it'd be great if you could share your ideas, if you could share your impressions, if you could share what we've learned. Um, during the convention using either um, Instagram or Twitter and using the hashtag APACELT22. Okay, so yes. we really look forward to reading your comments and reading your input. Exactly. And please remember to tag us so we, <laughs> we can also reply. Yes. Okay. And finally, um, well, that's it. That's the end of the welcoming session. We hope you enjoy the sessions very much as much as we enjoy preparing them which sounds very nerdy, but we do enjoy preparing them. And you make the most of the opportunities to discuss new things, new ideas, try different things, hearing about how people teach somewhere else, comparing contexts, getting in touch with other, no, with different teachers, because that's that's a whole point to build a community. I apologize because you can see there's a source of my background noise is <laughs> there. But that's life for you. That's online teaching for you. Okay, so <laughs> that's the way it is. And he's, he's a lot more, he's a lot better with the camera than I am. <laughs> yes, it's a thing that we won't be seeing each other face to face, but at least we'll be screen to screen, having a lot of fun with the people around us too. So we really look forward to seeing you online. 
and uh, sharing all these three days with you. And we, we hope you enjoy all the sessions and everything we've prepared. Exactly. Okay, so welcome again and see you around. Bye. <laughs>